Good morning, Corinthian Baptist Church. Family and friends, welcome, welcome to our worship service this morning. We serve an awesome God, a wonderful God. And he deserves all the glory and all the honor. And we just thank him this morning to allow us to see yet another day. So we give God all the glory and all the honor this morning. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Just a few announcements this morning. I'd like to remind everyone about uh, the Wednesday prayer call. It's every Wednesday at 6 p.m. And to join in on that prayer call, you dial in at 605-313-4159. And the access code is 713377-POUND. Again, that's for our Wednesday prayer service call that starts at 6 p.m. And you can join in by dialing 605-313-4159. And the access code is 713377-POUND. Also, I'd like to invite you to join in on our Bible study. That's on Thursday at 7 p.m. And you can join in by dialing 712-770-3731. And the access code is 442162-POUND. Again, that's for our Bible study on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. And you can join in by dialing 712-770-3731. And the access code at 442162-POUND. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Anyone interested in working the polls for this coming election, uh, you can dial 267-474-1271. Again, that's for working the polls uh, this, this coming election. Um, if anyone is interested, um, the number to call is 267-474-1271, and you will get more information there. This is a paid position. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'd like to read a correspondent we have received. Thinking of you. Just wanted you to know you're on my mind. Hope you have a wonderful day. Miss all of you. I'm very happy for our church prayer service on Wednesday nights. At least I can hear you, and if I can't, if I can't see you, please continue to keep myself as well as my husband in your prayers. Your sister in Christ, from Mrs. Janice James Moy. Amen. 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 Uh, at this, at this time, uh, we like to. Remember the Marshall family. Uh, keep them in your prayers as Reverend Marshall has transitioned this morning. So let's continue to keep that family and all families who have loved ones who have uh, passed on. Let's continue to keep all those families in prayer. Amen. 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 Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown, located at 6113 North 21st Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19138, serving the community for 120 years. We've come to lift up the name of Jesus this morning. How about you? We've come to give him glory, and we've come to give him honor. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We give God all the praise this morning. How about you? Come on, let's give the Lord some praise this morning. We've come to lift him up and lift him high so that all can see that Jesus Christ is the Lord. So much better since I laid my burdens down. Since I laid my burdens down. I feel better. I feel better. So much better. So much better. Since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. 
Jesus would have been allowed to join two fraternities at college. It's because they could see he was both Alpha and Omega. <laughs> As you shake your heads on that joke, I'm going to say welcome, family and friends. I have reminders for you today. Today is National Rappé Day. In other words, make yourself a milkshake. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So we offer our encouragement to all survivors and thrivers with a reminder, ladies, get your mammograms. Happy birthday to everyone born in October. Enjoy each day. And happy anniversary to everyone who is celebrating. Monday is going to be World Teacher Day. When you see them online tomorrow, thank them for all the hard work. Now I want you to listen carefully. October 18th, Corinthian will celebrate 120 years of Christian service. But what is a celebration without cake? On Saturday, October 17th from 12 to 2 p.m., Corinthian members can drive by the educational building parking lot to receive a prize. We look forward to waving to you. Remember, 30 days before the big day, vote and pray. Yeah. 
the Lord everyone. At this time we're going to have our scripture reading. Our scripture reading comes from Isaiah the 55th chapter verses 8 and 9. Again that's Isaiah the 55th chapter verses 8 and 9. The Lord's holy and righteous word. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's Isaiah, the 55th chapter, verses 8 and 9. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy and righteous name. We thank you for allowing us to see yet another day, Father. Be with those families that are in mourning this morning. Give them comfort, Father God. Let them know you still sit high on the mountain. And you know all about the situations. Keep us, Father, as we deal with this virus. We continue to stand on your word. We trust in your word, Father. And we thank you that we can come to you and lay down our burdens and leave them there. So again, this morning, we say thank you, Father God. We thank you for all you have done for us and what you have planned for us. We glorify you. We honor you. We praise your holy name. Be with our sick and shut in, Father God. Give them what they need day to day. Continue to be with them and with us all. We love you, Father, in the precious and holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We do pray. Amen. Amen. Show us your perfect way. 
this morning to lift up the name of Jesus. We need a word from you this morning, Lord God. We need to hear from you this morning, God. If we don't hear from you, Lord, what will we do? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just give God praise. Yes, God. The name of Jesus. Can we sing that verse one more time? We need to hear from you, God. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we hallelujah, if we don't hear what will we do? Hallelujah. We want to Lord. to be, I'm going to say, in the, in the house of prayer today. Amen. I'm thankful that God, as we slept last night, he commissioned an angel to keep a watch over this old heartbeat of our God. He brought us back one more time to praise him. Yeah. And to lift him up. We've been talking about when are you going to take us into the church, Lord. The church is right here this morning. Yeah. We come together. Lord, we praise God. Lord, we lift his name. We need to be just shouting this morning for what he's done. Hallelujah. What he's doing and what he's yeah. going to do. Because he is God all by himself. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm just praising him. I give him love. I magnify him because he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy of all the praise. Of all the glory and of all the honor, hallelujah, we need to just continue to look to him, look to the hills, from whence cometh our help this morning, from whence cometh our help this morning, hallelujah, our help, hallelujah, comes from God, who made heaven and earth, thank you, Lord Jesus. Just have to make 
take time from the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We thank God this morning for bringing us one more time, hallelujah, to this place, hallelujah, to expound on his word and to deliver his word and to let you know no matter what is going on in the world, God is still moving, hallelujah. We come this morning to lift up his name. We come this morning because of what he has told us to do. Go ye therefore, Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Bringing back to their remembrance all the things that I have taught you. So we are going this morning, and we are talking, and we are going out, and we're, we're teaching, and we're calling in those who might have gotten a little lax because you're home and you can't get out to be with people, but you don't have to come and be with the people. You are the church. Hallelujah. You are the church. So we thank God for his word and we thank him for obedience to his word. Hallelujah. As we come this morning, we come lifting up his name. I just, I don't know about you, but I brought my fire with me this morning. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. We come, hallelujah, this morning to lift up the name of Jesus. We give him thanks and we give him glory for what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. Hallelujah. We thank him one more time. Hallelujah. For being able to expound on his word. We come. Scripture has been read this morning. Isaiah, the 55th chapter, the 8th and 9th verse. But my focus verse is the 8th verse. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, hallelujah, for the opportunity, Lord, to come one more time, God, lifting up your name and praise, God. We thank you, Father God, for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit right now, Father God. We magnify your name, God. We glorify your name, God. We exalt your Father for who you are, God. You are God all by yourself, Father God. You sit high and you look low, Father God. God, I just thank you right now for your presence in this building, God. I thank you, Father God, for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, Father God, in us, Father God. God, we just give you charge, Father God. Do what you will this morning, Father God. Hallelujah. The service is not in our hands, God. It's in your hands, Lord. We magnify you, God. And God, as I stand here, God, hallelujah, hide me, hallelujah. Let others see the Christ in me, Father God. Use me, Father God, for your glory this morning, God. We magnify you and we we just praise you, God, and we thank you, God, for what you've done, God, for what you're doing and for what you're going to do, Father God. And God, I just lift up the bereaved family this morning right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, I lift them up, God. I ask that you comfort as only you know how, Father. Nobody can comfort like you, Father God. Encourage them to rest in you, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. Give them the peace, God, that they need, Lord. Your peace that passes all understanding, Father God. And then God just encourage their hearts in this morning. We know they're sad, Father God. God, we're sad as well, Lord, but we know, Father God, that in the name of Jesus, we continue to praise you and lift you up and magnify you, Father God. We think on you, God, and we think on your word, Father God. And we just give you glory and we just give you honor. And we ask that you just give us the strength that we need, Father God, to do what must be done, to do what we need to do. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I would just like to say and remind those out there, uh, our Corinthian Knights, our visitors, that this is the first Sunday. And this is our communion Sunday. And if you'd like, as I'm preparing to do my sermon that you would um, go and get your 
crackers, your juice, your bread, whatever it is that you partake of at home with communion. So when we do our communion service, that we will all be ready to commune at the same time. Amen. Amen. Just like to say my thought for today is when your plans and God's plans don't match up. When your plans and God's plans don't match up. Scripture Isaiah 55, 8 says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Life is full of interruptions. Sometimes we have big plans for a career, family, or ministry, but God takes our lives in a different direction. When our plans and God's plans don't match up, we often try to kick the door down. And then what happens? Then things get worse. Because our plans and God's plans are not matching up. I've heard it said that when you want to make God laugh, start making plans. Hallelujah. <laughs> start making plans. Just ask Jonah. We're going to be talking about Jonah this morning. Mm -hmm. And we'll be coming from that book, and I will just speak briefly on how Jonah had a plan that he thought was better than God's plan. Mm -hmm. He learned the hard way how to respond when God's plans and his plans didn't match. Mm -hmm. God told Jonah to warn the people of Nineveh that they needed to do what? To repent from their evil ways. Nineveh is the capital city of wicked Assyrians. The purpose of the book of Jonah is to show the extent of God's grace, the message of salvation for all people. God gave Jonah a mission, but Jonah, <laughs> putting himself in the middle center of the universe, this wise self decides that he's not gonna do what God said, he's gonna move what? On his plan. He got a plan. You know how we are sometimes when God calls us and we run and we have our plans and we say, Lord, are you sure it's me? Right. <laughs> God is sure of all that he does. And we begin to run and we begin to go the opposite way and we begin to even sometimes say, God, give it to somebody else. Are you sure, Lord, that you want me to do this? Your ways his ways are not our ways. And our thoughts are not his thoughts. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm glad mm -hmm. that our thoughts are not his thoughts. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So many awful things happen in society. Pornography, child abuse, serial killing, and so much more. When we see and hear about all of these things, we begin to wish revenge upon the perpetrators. But stop and think. Suppose God told you to take the gospel to the worst of the offenders. How would you respond? If he told you to take a go to the people that are, that are wrong and we know that they're wrong and you see that they're wrong, but God has chosen you like he chose his prophet Jonah. Go and take the news to them that their lease on life is about to be up. Why? If they don't repent. If they don't repent. But how would you respond? Sometimes our response is not so good. As I just said, sometimes, Lord, are you sure you want me to go and tell them? Yes, I want you to be the one. My ways, hallelujah, are not your ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Jonah was given this task. What did the prophet do? He ran in the opposite direction of what God told him to go. 
As we see in the first chapter, Jonah forsook the mission that the Lord had given him. He forsook his mission. God told Jonah to preach to Nineveh because its wickedness had come up before him. But you see, Jonah, he hated the Assyrians. He hated them so much that he didn't want them to receive God's mercy. Now, does that sound like some of us, hallelujah? We don't think, hallelujah, that some people should have the mercy of God because of what we think, our plan, how we feel, the world feels that they don't deserve God's mercy, but at the same time that God has been merciful to you and me and you and others, hallelujah, the same God, hallelujah. So Jonah had plans of his own. So what did he do? He forsook his missions. Things only got worse from there because of Jonas's disobedience. He endangered the lives of others. Hallelujah. What others are we talking about this morning, Sister Covington? Because we are being the crew on the ship that he boarded going in the opposite direction of where God told him to go. See, when you have a plan, your plan, God has already knows what's going to happen with his plan. But not only that, he knows what's going to happen with your plan as well. His plan is going to be okay. Your plan is not going to work out so good for you and sometimes not for others. He boarded a ship, hallelujah, headed to Tosh's. He was supposed to go to Nineveh in the other direction. We got to realize that our sin and our disobedience can hurt others sometimes. It's so much easier to obey God. He got on a ship headed to Tarshish. Jonah thought he could flee from the Lord. The Lord, what happened out there on that ocean, he sent a great wind on the sea. A storm arose and the ship was threatened to break up. The sailors began to throw things off the ship trying to balance it because they didn't know what was going on. And the storm just raised on, but then they went down in, in the bottom of the ship. They knew that Jonah was down there sleeping and they, had, they asked him, what is going on and who are you and how are you sleeping below deck? We've got a storm going on. You know the story. You know about Jonah. You know what happened. Hallelujah. Jonah told them who he was and that he was running from the Lord. But I come to tell you today, you can run, but you can't hide. You cannot run out of the sight of the Lord because he is the all-knowing and all-seeing God. They threw Jonah overboard. Why? Jonah asked them, told, please just throw me overboard because I'm running for the, from the Lord and I'm the reason with my plan that this is happening. But I want to tell you today, and I love this, your arms are too short <laughs> to box with God. Hallelujah. They threw him overboard because and told them to, and they threw him into the sea. But let me tell you what happened. Even with Jonah, hallelujah, being and going on with his plan and being disobedient, when we see chapter two, what did God do? He provided a huge fish to do what? Swallow up Jonah. He's the fish swallowed Jonah. God worked a miracle. He had that fish when they threw Jonah overboard. Nobody but Jesus had this fish prepared, hallelujah, to swallow him up. Jonah prayed, but look at what he's doing in this chapter. He's praying in chapter two to the same God, the very God that he's running away from. He had to, he had to pray to him. But what did God do for him, even though he didn't want mercy for the Ninevites? God showed mercy unto Jonah. Jonah, hallelujah. My ways are not your ways, he said. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Jonah prayed, hallelujah, to the very God that he was running away from. And again, the Lord worked a miracle by providing that fish to swallow up Jonah. Jeremiah 29, 11 reads as follows. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Hallelujah. Let me tell you some points here. 
God has a plan when we don't know which way to go. God still has a plan. God's promises endure through even the toughest trials. God believes that you can do the task he has given you and will be with you all the way. He doesn't just give you a task and just leave you for his word says, for lo, I am with you, what? Always, even unto the ends of the earth. Aren't you glad that when he gives you something, when he prepares you, to tells you to go somewhere and to do something, that he is with you. But we still have a plan of our own, our agenda, because we don't like somebody, or because we hate somebody, or because we don't feel that they can be saved. He saved you and he saved me, didn't he? Hallelujah. Some of us, hallelujah have done some things that we can't tell nobody about but the Lord because of the right. way that they are and how bad they are. But I'm so glad, hallelujah, that we serve a forgiving God. Yeah. We serve a loving God. Yeah. We serve a just God. We serve a God who is not just for me or you, but he's for everybody and he loves everybody. He's a compassionate God. Again, that's what the purpose of this book is about. God's extended grace, hallelujah, his salvation for the world, not just for Jonah and the Israelites, hallelujah, when he gives you the task that he has given you, he will be with you all the way, Jonah prayed and look, and he was thankful that he did not drown, mm -hmm. hallelujah, he was thankful that he did not drown, now Jonah knows the Lord that he was, he's praying to the God, and he knows what kind of God he is. Just like we know we serve a loving God. We serve a compassionate God. We serve a compassion, a, a forgiving God. We know that if God sends us out to take the gospel to the worst of the offenders, hallelujah, when we go, we don't get our agenda in the way because when we go, hallelujah, we know that God stepped in and saved us one day, hallelujah, and he wants us to go out and he wants us to tell others about the goodness of Jesus. He wants us to go and tell them about a man, somebody who can save anybody. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what color your skin is, doesn't matter your ethnic group, he is in control, hallelujah. But Jonah prayed inside the fissure. Let me tell you how God is so good. We think God don't hear our prayers, but even while Jonah was inside the fish, God heard his prayer. God heard his prayer. Jonah prayed. Jonah was repenting for what he had done then. Hallelujah. How he had gone the opposite direction of what God had told him to do. And just think if we would do what God has asked us to do and told us to do, we wouldn't have to go through so many changes. We bring stuff on ourselves and then we go, woe is me. Well, what happened? Why are you in this predicament that you're in? Because you had a plan. That was opposite of the plan that God had given you. <laughs> Trust God when his plan is scary and hard. You can pray anywhere and at any time to God. And guess what? He will hear you. I'm so glad that he hears. And not only that he hears, but he answers prayer. Hallelujah. Even with Jonah still, he got his plans and he's on his way. I'm going to say he's messing things up because that's what our plan, that's what we do with our plan. We mess it up. And then it takes so much longer for the work to be done, for the mission to be completed. Some of us even do like Jonah. We forsake our mission. Hallelujah. But then God has a way. Hey, God has a way of bringing you back. Hallelujah. He has a way of getting your attention. We forget that he is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How? What happens and what happens when God's plans and your plans don't 
don't match up. We're looking at Jonah and we see what happens. Hallelujah. Even with his own plans, as I said, and he's still making his plans. Look what happened. Hallelujah. As he was in that fish, God did a miracle of deliverance. He delivered him out of that fish. Did he not to get Jonah to do as God had commanded? What did the fish do? Vomited Jonah up on the land. He vomited him. And as a prophet, hallelujah, Jonas was obligated to obey God's word. But he did what? He tried to escape his responsibilities as so many of us do today. When God has given us something to do, hallelujah, we want to try to escape that responsibility. But I'm telling you, you can try all you want to. You can flee all you want to or think you're fleeing. You can come up with your ideas. God, I hear you, but hallelujah. But God, not today. God, I got to get some things done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You come up with all the reasons why it shouldn't be you. But God has designated you. Hallelujah. For a purpose or a task. Hallelujah. And you want to try to escape your responsibilities. But I tell you, you will not escape what God has given to you. How do I know when the Lord kept dealing with me about being a minister and standing? I ran. I ran from God. I tell you that I ran from God. But God, hallelujah, in his sweet way, kept coming back. Showing me things, telling me things, speaking to me, speaking through others to me. Hallelujah. And I'm hearing and I know it deep down in my spirit that it is the Lord that is doing this. But oh, I said, no, God, no, God, I'm, I'm afraid. Fear, hallelujah, but God said, fear not. And I mean, he spoke these words to me. Fear not, hallelujah, for lo, I am with you. Yeah. Go and prepare, he said to me. You have a lot of work to do, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I saw this, hallelujah. I'm not ashamed to tell it. I was laying on my bed, hallelujah, and I saw it. I saw it in a vision. I his eyes wide open. Saw me and my children being floated up, hallelujah, towards heaven. There was a bridge. I say toward the sky. There was a bridge, hallelujah. There was a man standing on the bridge in white, hallelujah, looking down on me and my children, hallelujah. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, is this real? What is this that I'm seeing? And that's when he spoke to me and said, fear not, <laughs> fear not, for lo, I am with you. He told me, don't be afraid of what you're seeing. Go and prepare. God has found favor with you is what it, God has found favor with you. Go and prepare. You have a lot of work to do. You know, even if after that, I was still running, but I know that it was God. I got up and I took a walk around the corner to the corner grocery store, but I'm walking and I'm talking to myself and I'm saying, Lord, what was that that I saw? Lord, was it you, God? Lord, God was it real, but he had a plan. Hallelujah for me. How do I know he had the plan? You see where I am today, don't you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God, hallelujah. He had, he did a miracle and he delivered. He delivered Jonah the prophet. Hallelujah. Don't try to escape your responsibilities. Hallelujah. You know that as believers, we are obligated, hallelujah, to obey the Lord. So we come up with our own plans, hallelujah, when we try to escape our responsibilities, when our plans that don't match up with God's plan. Chapter 3, Jonah goes and then when he fulfills his mission. Jonah is preaching in this chapter. Hallelujah. He went from hallelujah, forsaking his, his mission. He went from that to praying. Now he's preaching. Now he's done what God told him to do in the first place. Hallelujah. But look at this. He got a second chance. Hallelujah. A second chance. 
God, aren't you glad for a second chance? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad for a second chance. God. And the word of God came to Jonah the second time. Yeah. Hallelujah. The second time. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. Thank you for being not giving up on us, Father God, because we think that we have made ourselves the center of the universe. Hallelujah. Our plans, God, are going to supersede your plan. But I come to tell you, you don't stand a chance against our almighty God. God told Jonah, go to the great city of Nineveh, Nineveh and proclaim the message I give to you. Jonah went and preached. 40 more days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. That was a message of doom and gloom that the prophet had to go and tell the people in Nineveh. A message, hallelujah, prophecy of gloom. Sometimes the prophets didn't like to go and tell those prophets, tell the people about these doom, gloom, and doom prophecies. But guess what? It was for their benefit. Because God is warning them and telling them 40 more days, hallelujah, hallelujah, 40 more days, hallelujah. If you had 40 days to get yourself together, 40 days to repent, 40 days to turn from your evil ways. He sent out, sent them out there, but hallelujah, just like today, he warns us and tells us, sends people to tell us things. God said you need to get yourself in order. God said it's not, it's all, he's not going to wait always for you. He wants you to know, hallelujah, that your lease on life is about to be given up if you don't get yourself in order, if you don't do what he wants you to do. Hallelujah. But Jonah went and told the people at Nineveh, and guess what? <laughs> guess what happened when Jonah preached? The city repented and God withheld his judgment. Mm. Even the most wicked will be saved if they truly repent of their sins and turn to God. But we can't have a plan of our own. We're going to try to block somebody's salvation because we don't like them, huh? because we hate them, because they, hallelujah, hallelujah, are too wicked to be saved, not forgetting that God reached out his merciful hand and saved you one day. God, hallelujah, drew you, drew you to him. Remember, somebody prayed for you, hallelujah, when you were out there in the world. God had you then. Somebody prayed for you. Hallelujah. They, they, they had you on their mind. What if they, hallelujah, had their plan? I'm so glad, hallelujah, that, hallelujah, my ways, <laughs> hallelujah, his ways are not our ways, hallelujah. Yeah. Most of all, his thoughts, our thoughts are not his thoughts. Because if our thoughts, hallelujah, we can think some ugly thoughts sometimes, mm -hmm. hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can think some bad things about people sometimes, but I'm so glad the almighty God, hallelujah, knows our thoughts are not his thoughts. Hallelujah. God forgave Nineveh just as he had forgiven Jonah. He forgave Jonah for what going in the opposite direction, but not doing, hallelujah, what he had told him to do. The purpose of God's judgment is correction, not revenge. Hallelujah. He doesn't want revenge. He wants to correct us. He wants to change our thinking. When our thinking changes, our actions follow. Hallelujah. In chapter four, we see Jonah, hallelujah, still trying to implement his plan, which doesn't match God's plan. <laughs> After God has pulled him and had, had, had the fish regurgitate him to the land and he went and preached and he said what the Lord had told him to say and men of our repentance, you know why? You know why? You know why? Jonah didn't want to go and tell him what the Lord said because he knew he knew the people would repent. He knew that they would repent. And he also knew that God would forgive them. But Jonah was angry at God's compassion. He thought it was so wrong, hallelujah. Jonah did not want the Ninevites uh, forgiven. His, that was his plan. He wanted the Ninevites destroyed. 
Jonah's plan again. Jonah didn't understand that the God of Israel was also the God of the whole world. Hallelujah. You know, the Israelites didn't want the Gentiles to know about the goodness of Jesus. They wanted to keep, keep them for, your, for themselves. But I tell you, hallelujah, the goodness and salvation of the Lord is for everybody. It's for the world. It's just not contained to you and you and me and me because of who you are. Well, hallelujah, if it was hallelujah, where would we be? But that's why he says, fear not, for lo, I am with you. He has a plan. He has sent us out and told us what to do. Jonah didn't understand that, but we have some people today who don't understand that. We feel that because we're saved. Hallelujah, God has saved us. God has called us in from our sins. Hallelujah, that others, as we look at them and we see what they're doing, we want to pass judgment on them. Hallelujah. Don't forget that God could have passed judgment on you while you are out there in the world and out of the ark of safety, but he didn't. Hallelujah. Because of his compassion. Mm -hmm. Jonah says, hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God in verse 2, Jonah said, in verse 2 of chapter 4, he said, I knew that you are gracious God. God and compassionate God. You are gracious, you're compassionate, you're slow to anger, abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. God's plan. Jonah knew that. He knew what kind of God he was serving. He knows and he knew, hallelujah, all of these characteristics about God. We as believers today know that we serve a God, hallelujah, who is slow to anger, hallelujah, who is abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamities. If you don't believe it, just look out, he gave Jonah a second chance. How many chances has he given you today? Hallelujah, think about it. How many chances has he given to you? God's plan supersedes our plan. Then Jonah wanted to die because what the destruction didn't happen. <laughs> he had forgotten God's mercy when he was in the fish. So hallelujah. He was merciful. What did he pray? He was thankful that he didn't die. Hallelujah. In the fish. But now that the destruction has happened, has not happened. Hallelujah. He wants to die. Why? Because he figured, hallelujah, if he had uh, told them what the Lord said and then the destruction, if he hadn't done it and the destruction hadn't happened, then it would be good for his reputation, looking out for him and not looking out for God's will. Who are you trying to please today, man or yourself? Hallelujah. Whose will do you want, Father, in the name of Jesus to, to, to be under? But that is of the Lord. We want to do what he has said for us to do. But hallelujah. How quick do we forget and how soon do we forget the things that the Lord has done for us? How merciful he has been to us in situations where nobody Nobody but the Lord could have gotten us out of, and we come out, hallelujah, we say, Lord, we thank you. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, because that's what's keeping us today, not because we're so good, but God is merciful, and because of his grace, Jonah, this, this is what Jonah did, hallelujah, he went and he sat down in a place east of the city for shelter, hallelujah, hallelujah, what he wanted to see what would happen with Nineveh, hallelujah, but he already knew what would happen, hallelujah, because he knew what kind of God he served. That means when we go out, hallelujah, we got to be sure, be sure, hallelujah, when we go, we can tell others about the God we serve, hallelujah, the God he served, the love that he has for us in spite of, hallelujah, in spite of our ugliness, in spite of us being unlovable. He still loves us. Hallelujah. But hallelujah, this is what happened. God called, caused the plant to grow large enough to give Jonah shade. Hallelujah. Then he sent a worm <laughs> after that to attack the plant and kill it. 
the next day, as the sun heat beat down on Jonah's head, Jonah had the nerve to express his frustration to God because he was hot. And then the shade was not there. But let me tell you what, and that's when God reminded Jonah of four truths to remember when God's plans and your plans are different. They don't match up. Number one, God can see things you can't see. He can see the past and the present and the future all at the same time. He created time, so he is not subject to time. Number two, God is good to you even when you're cranky. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may have been going in the opposite direction from God, and he still covers you what with shade. Hallelujah. God cares about your comfort because that's the kind of God he is. God loves you even when you are unlovable. Hallelujah. Number three, God is in control of every detail of your life. Your plans don't just fail randomly. Me. God has a purpose for everything in your life. Jonah shows us that God uses the big, a large fish, and the small, a worm, to direct our lives, but he is in control of it all. Number four, God wants you to focus on what will last. Most of what worries you won't be around tomorrow. God wanted Jonah to care what about the salvation of the people of Nineveh, not a plant that would die the next day. <laughs> He wanted him to care about the people's salvation, just like he wants us to care about those that are not saved. Hallelujah. Don't be worried about little trivial things, little simple things. The plant died. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm going to do. I got to just go plant another plant. You know, just go ahead and do that. But God, I still give you glory and I give you honor because, you know, we have a habit of saying God is in control of everything. But when it comes to things like that, just like the Jonah, we don't think God is in control of the plants that grow, the rain that falls, the trees, hallelujah, as we look at his beauty, we get upset because these plants are growing, hallelujah, but I come to tell you, we got something going on right now in the world and people, well, we want to have a plan about it, I wasn't going to go there, but God put it on the spirit, the president of the United States right now is in the hospital from the coronavirus. So many of us have our own plan as to why <laughs> this happened to him. Our own plan as to what should happen with him. You saw on TV, and I was talking to my sister and some people, my daughter, and she told me, she said, mommy, some people said that's what he gets. That's good for him. That's what he deserves. That's whose plan? Man's plan not God's plan. We as believers in Christ are taught to do what? Pray for those who are in authority over us. Hallelujah. That's what the word says. Pray for those who are in authority over us. We should have been praying for the president anyway, but we need to pray now. The man is on his sick bed. How soon again we forget. You forget when you were sick. Hallelujah. You called on the Lord for healing. You forget. Hallelujah. When others were sick and you pray to God to heal them. That is what we should be doing, not only for the president of the United States, but so many people who have this coronavirus, but we can't let our plan, because so many, so many people, just like Jonah, hate the president. They hate him. There are his ways that we dislike and things that he's doing, but so many people hate him and they want him to die. But I tell you, I'm so glad my ways are not his ways. And guess what? Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Hallelujah. We need to pray for him. Mm -hmm. Just because plans aren't turning out the way you want doesn't mean God isn't intimately involved in every step. Ask God to help you see his hand in your broken plans and trust him in his goodness as he shows you the way forward. Hallelujah. We've got to be in God's plan. How soon we 
forget, hallelujah, but we need to tell others about what the Lord has done for us, where he brought us from. We need to speak to others and let them know, hallelujah, that God loves us. Maybe if we told others, hallelujah, about what God has done to us, it might help draw somebody else to the Lord. Some sins runs rampant in America. Why is America in such moral, social, and political turmoil today? It is because we are no longer moral and religious. We no longer fear God. We proudly don t-shirts that read, I had an abortion and I don't regret it. We sing songs that glorify abuse, rape, murder, and blasphemy. But I come to tell you, hallelujah, God is not pleased. But even though he's not pleased, we don't move on with our plan. He has a plan. He has a plan with what he's going to do. Hallelujah. 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 As I open the doors of the church, the only hope for us is in repentance. We got to repent. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless you repent, you shall all like a wise parish. Maybe as believers, hallelujah, we as believers walk in the light and speak the truth and love before all hope is gone. We need to do that. Sin cannot and will not ever win. I tell you, God's way will endure forever and ever. God is able to use our mistakes sometimes to help others to come to him. It may be painful, but admitting our sins can be powerful example those who don't know the Lord. Talk about the sinners, hallelujah, what God has done to you, done for you, hallelujah. I invite you, if you don't know him today as your Savior, get to know him, accept him as your Savior, accept him into your heart today, hallelujah. Then when you accept him into your heart, you walk into your new of life. Just think about it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Believe on him. Accept him for who he is because he is God all by himself. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus today. Accept him. He loves you. Believe in him. Nothing hard, nothing hard, nothing hard, nothing hard about this thing called salvation. All you gotta do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm a sinner. And I want to be saved. Hallelujah. He is you. Believe in him. He is you. Hallelujah. Accept him today. Give your heart to Jesus Christ. Before it's too late for me. Hallelujah. Don't do like Jonah. Go the other way. Come up with your plans and your excuses. Hallelujah. As to why you can't come to God, I come to tell you, he already worked it out. He's not asking much. Just accept it. Unless you say it's believe and accept it. Unless you say it today. Accept him as a savior. Now we come to a part of our service, hallelujah, where we should be thinking. We should be thinking on what God, what was done for us at Calvary's cross. How Jesus shed his blood for us on the cross for all of us. Hallelujah. We ought to be just thinking on that right now and nothing else. Giving him praise for what he's done for us. It is our communion time today. Hallelujah. Let us pray right now over these emblems, hallelujah, that have been provided for communion. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for these natural emblems today, God. God, as we pray, Father God, we pray, Father God, that you would turn this natural, Father God, into divine and spiritual emblems, God. God, we give it to you, God, and we come, Father God, lifting up your name and thanking you for what you've done, God, what you're doing and what you're going to do in the name of Jesus. Thank you.
It is communion time. On the same night that he was betrayed, hallelujah. On the same night that he was betrayed, hallelujah. He took the bread, hallelujah. And he gave thanks, hallelujah. He said, this is my body, broken, given to you, hallelujah. My body, hallelujah. Each time you eat this do we eat it in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup, hallelujah, and did the same. He said, this is my blood in the New Testament. Each time you drink this, do it in remembrance of me, hallelujah. So let us all in Jesus' name, hallelujah, eat together, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let us eat together. Let us drink together, hallelujah. When they had finished, hallelujah, they went out to the Mount of Olives singing a hymn. They had no, no, just no benediction, hallelujah. They went out singing, hallelujah, before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I know it was a blood. I know it was a blood, I know it was a blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross, and I know it was a blood for me. They whipped him all night long. They whipped him all night long. They whipped him all night long for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. 